Okay, so they picked up uh, a, a bit of the pegmatite trend there, which is also lithium bearing. So, okay. so there's a lot of people who've uh, had a lot of uh, success very, very quickly in there. So, uh, you know, once uh, Azua has shone the light on these things. Hello, and welcome to the Market Bull Podcast. Please note, topics and stocks discussed in this podcast are not financial or investment advice. Tom Redcliffe is the Executive Director at Greentech Metals, which is listed on the ASX under code GRE. The company is focused on exploration and development of resources towards electric vehicles, including lithium, copper and nickel, currently all located in Western Australia. Tom discussed the projects at the company and the growing interest in the Osborne Joint Venture project they have, which is in close proximity to Azor Minerals. Here is Tom Redcliffe. So hello, I'm Ben Kostrich and this is the Market Bull Podcast. Joining me on the show today is Tom Redcliffe, uh, an Executive Director at Green Tech Metals, which is listed on the ASX under code GRE. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot of the guess, electrification of materials that we're all needing and they've got a range of projects and plans in the motion and, and into the future. But welcome to the show, Tom. Oh, thanks, Ben. Always good to be here. Thank you. So for those that are unfamiliar with, with Green Tech, we'll go into the exploration side of the company, but I always like to introduce the guests first and find out what they've done in a well, throughout their life. And when I was looking at your, uh, I guess, history, uh, you're a geologist with over 40 years experience, but I can imagine throughout your time, you've done a whole host of different things in the lead up to now being in a, in a director role and probably still enjoy getting out in the field, but um, everything just changes over the years, you get the experience. So, so what is your story and, and how has it led you to Green Tech Metals? Uh, look, um, you know, we could say good luck or whatever, but the, <laughs> look, I've, I had a long history in my formative days uh, working in the diamond industry, and uh, it perhaps is uh, somewhat uh, different than the lithium industry mm. in that the uh, diamond world, it's uh, definitely very, very hard to find what you're looking for, etc. cetera. And, um, but I spent some 20 odd years working with uh, Ashton Mining was the Australian Exploration Manager. We're involved in Argyle, of course, had a big stake in that mine. And I was, uh, you know, worked at those, both Allendale and Argyle at the discovery stages of those projects as well, part of the team. And uh, went on, like I said, with Ashton. And uh, when Rio ultimately took over Ashton, we saw, sought other employment. And I spent another the following 10 years working with Striker Resources. Also in the uh, diamond space and some little bit in the gold space there as well. And then after uh, that work, you know, with, we went on to discover, uh, well, actually when I was with Ashton, we found the Merlin Diamond Mine. And um, the, uh, that was taken over by Rio, as I was saying, when I was with Striker Resources, we acquired that project and we went on to uh, assessing that, bulk testing, trial mining and, and uh, trying to develop the, the project. And uh, when I left that project, uh, I became involved with a private equity group in uh, London uh, called Sorrento Resources that has a large um, portfolio of projects in largely in WA, but some overseas stuff as well. And uh, I was working with those guys for uh, till, up until fairly recently, <clears throat> but that uh, what precipitated the entry into uh, Irrawarra Resources and then ultimately the creation of Green Tech Metals at, where we listed on ASX at the beginning of last year. Now, uh, Green Tech's projects in the West Pilbara came out of Artemis Resources and Sorrento Resources were a, a stakeholder in Artemis Resources. So there were some synergies between those c companies. Mm. And having picked up those projects, we ran with those for the last <coughs> 18 months or so now. And our flagship project was, um, or is at the time anyway, the uh, the uh, Wandu Copper project down in um, south of Karatha. And uh, we've managed to increase the resource there from 2.7 million tonnes to uh, 
just over 6 million tonnes. Okay. And uh, you said before it's been listed really <coughs> since last year. And if I flash back, it probably would have been a very difficult market to even approach and list into it. But when you're looking at the graph, you've had some great success, which is probably from results that you guys have had. But when you're breaking down what Green Tech Metals is for those that are unfamiliar, and we said at the outset it's for, for electrification, but what is the company's mission and I guess highlighting, yeah, whereabouts it is, you said, predominantly Western <coughs> Australian sort of projects? Yes, look, Green Tech as the name says, it was set up specifically to pursue the uh, the uh, green energy metals. So, and that is copper, which it had. There were also nickel projects involved in that uh, in the company as well, particularly at Ruth Well and uh, Osborne project. And uh, lithium came along a little bit later, and uh, when we discovered the early this year that we had lithium bearing pegmatites on our Ruthwell tenements. Mm. And that, I mean, that's been really the <laughs> captivation, I can imagine, for a lot of investors. But drilling down on, well, yeah, I don't know really where to start with all the range of projects and tenements that you have. I mean, do we want to just, I guess, go at the, the Ruth project and just talk to us a little bit about <laughs> what that is and yeah, what have been happening or what has been happening with that project? The lithium project? Yes, yes yeah, 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 yeah. Look, the obviously with the Zua making some very significant discoveries of lithium bearing pegmatites just up the road from us, only, you know, 25 k's away. And they had been looking for nickel, of course, and not only looking, but <laughs> doing resource drilling on their nickel projects. <coughs> they, theirs was a very significant discovery. We recognised it as such. We're down the road. There were some synergies. You know, we had nickel deposits down there as well at, at Ruth Well and the geology was similar, etc. So we decided to look for lithium. And uh, our first discovery there was uh, the Kobe project. And um, the uh, and we managed to find that, you know, really it turned up in the first dozen samples that we took. You know, we saw the pegmatite, sampled it, and virtually straight away got, you know, over 1% lithium in, in a couple of the samples and uh, we're pretty excited by that if not stunned hmm. okay um, so we uh, took the samples to Curtin University to confirm what we had and uh, it turned out to be uh, spodumene we subsequently chased this pegmatite for some seven and a half kilometers it went across our package of Ruthwell tenements into the uh, what we call our Osborne Joint, Joint Venture Tenement with Artemis Resources, and uh, the um, what I, I guess what we find most interesting about it is that uh, over that length, you know, we can get one and a half percent lithium oxide at one end of this of the uh, pegmatite, and you can go down to the other end and get similar results. You know, even up to one point eight percent. So the consistency and pervasiveness of the mineralisation is quite extraordinary. And so it's obviously part of a, a very large event. So, um, and that, it's not the biggest pegmatite in the world, I suppose, but, you know, you get four or five metres, six metres wide, there it pinches, it swells and so forth, but it's pretty continuous all, all the way along. And uh, following that, you know, we knew we were onto something, so we um, started searching the rest of our tenement package, including the uh, the Artemis Joint Venture Ground, the Osborne JB. Hmm. And it was there that we've had some significant success as well, not only getting high-grade uh, sample results out of the, some of the pegmatites there, you know, up to 3.6%, 2.5%. There's a, a cluster of, uh, of oddly orientated pegmatites there. The largest package there would be 100 metres wide. And in length, they don't match... Kobe directly, but you know you get them there. They're you know a kilometre long, eight hundred metres long, so forth. So um, that's very uh, interesting. They're all close together in the one area in the southern part of that tenement, and um, for the rest of it, you know. So from May, I think when we found Kobe, we've had boots on the ground, people looking these uh, pegmatites outcrop. And, uh, you know, obviously we use imagery, 
so forth. And um, but you don't, you, you know, they're in a sense relatively easy to identify uh, pegmatites. Perhaps and a little bit harder to find the ones that got lithium in. There are many pegmatites in there <coughs> that don't carry lithium. And we, um, I guess, this what this leads to is you get a lot of samples with nothing in. And uh, we've been just having that approach until we identify those trends or zones that are carrying the lithium. Interesting, because yeah, I mean, when I was trying to, when I was investigating the company, <laughs> I saw yeah you know, a whole host of different packages, and I just sort of go, well, yeah, how do you prioritize, or how do you allocate, or figure out what you want to utilize first? And I think that's almost been like a well, like a road that's led to to where where you are now, but. I mean, I can imagine with the the JV really being, I could say, the the flagship or one of the priorities. Mm. But there's a, a heck of a lot of other, well, things happening within the company. Uh, I mean, if you're looking at the Osborne joint venture, just talking a little bit about the history of that project, and you said before getting some high grade results. Uh, I mean, having that all sort of started to unfold into, you know, timing is everything. This lithium deficit that we're hearing repetitive repetitively uh, I mean what, what is going through that the company's mind in regards to really well potentially accelerating it but looking at opportunities to really expand that and oh. where it is yeah look we would think that we're probably you know up to 18 months behind where Azure were you know so we so where they were about 18 months ago they were rock chipping and so forth and you know before they drilled oh, we're at the same sort of stage and uh, that's why we've been you know, going over all of our ground to find all of the pegmatites and uh, finding out those which are lithium bearing so as to set us up for drilling. And, you know, when you get something, say, um, like Cobe, you know, which is, you know, over seven kilometres long, you'd have to think we'd be exceptionally unlucky for there not to be a section of that that's got the width and the depth and the grade and so mm. and so so we're very conscious that yeah you know, yeah that we could that we potentially onto something very fairly significant and um, you know we've been approached by many companies to uh, come in because grounds at a premium up there <coughs> and um, you know we've uh, just I guess uh, kept our powder dry for the time being mm. uh, to add value to the project. You know, will we need a partner sometime? Who knows? Um, you know, we want to build value within GRE, and uh, you know, it's a small company, tight shareholding. So uh, you know, we're looking okay. We've got sufficient funds to do what we want to do. And, um, you know, we haven't started the drill yet, but we will be soon, hopefully. Mm. And what else is uh, in the, the long scheme of things for the timeline for that? Because when I was looking at it, yeah, the, the drilling is, is meant to be upcoming, but there's a lot of well, a lot of steps that need to be ticked off before you get there. But, uh, I mean, once once touch wood, that all gets underway. I mean, what is the, I guess, long-term objective to develop and, well, I mean, testing and, <laughs> and re-drilling, I can imagine, is well, one to the forefront. It's always been my view that... If you, if you focus on the exploration, the drilling, the, the mine will take care of itself, you know. <laughs> so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Mm. Um, but yes, we will be, you know, there is certain processes you have to go through. We've got programs that work in place. We've organised heritage surveys uh, and uh, we'll be saying something to the market about that soon. Uh, and uh, off the back of that, uh, that will precipitate the drilling. Okay, and uh, you know, and we're pretty confident we'll be drilling this year for sure. Interesting. Yeah. And you said AZS Azure is is in close proximity, mm. um, and I think the beauty of that is almost everyone is now aware of of how big that deposit is, and there's a lot more work to be done. But the yeah, I guess the spotlight has now been shone on that area, um, and you said there's probably a lot of interest. But are there any other sort of companies that are in that similar proximity? I mean, AZS is, you know, pretty big and doing pretty well. But are well, there other other groups as well that well, are also they, collaborating? They, well, they are. I, I guess the main players there, when you look at it, uh, apart from GRE, of course, and our JB with Artemis. Artemis, in its own right, has tenements that. Uh, straddle the, uh, I get what you would call the prospective pegmatite zone. Mm. 
and because uh, that zone appears to be quite long, you know, 50, 60 odd kilometres or something like that. So, and uh, so that's uh, a couple of the companies, and uh, I think uh, Novo's in there as well. I'm not sure whether they're doing anything on the lithium front, but and a more recent, uh, I guess. Uh, a company to join the fray there is uh, Raiden Resources, who, um, you know, right off the bat have come up with some pretty exciting results, very close to to uh, Azure, you know, and uh, and in fact on the uh, Azures uh, are on the northern side of their pegmatite um, cluster, and Raiden just just by virtue of the fact that they had ground on the south side. Uh, turned up some pretty exciting results as well from lithium bearing pegmatites and um, and wearing another hat here of Warra Resources who have ground adjoining as um, Raiden right in that area and uh, we're quite uh, excited about that as well and uh, because you know the Irrawarra is also a tenement holder in there and has a little you know has a stake or a portion of the uh, prospective uh, pegmatite trend so, zone and um, so they're all in there mm-hmm. all sort of bundled together bundled now together yeah. yeah that's right and i actually to mention another one i think accelerate resources who just very recently announced a deal on some tenements that adjoin our gre ground okay so they've picked up uh, a, a bit of the pegmatite trend there which is also lithium bearing so okay. so there's a lot of people who've uh, had a lot of uh, success very very quickly in there so uh, you know once uh, Azua has shone the light on these things you know and that's where I look at yeah just the, the <laughs> scale of it the the time I say timing is everything now that lithium is at the the forefront there's been these deposits arguably or these lands everywhere um it's now that perfect sort of timing colliding with tailwinds from electric vehicles and electrification to now this yeah this perfect opportunity to yeah, get back to exploring but i mean that's the, the the primary project you could say the the osborne jv uh but you've got a whole other sort of portfolio with quite a lot of other projects in, in wa and i think w- w- when i know when i was looking at it you're, you're targeting lithium copper and, and nickel but um they're all highly valuable for the electrification but what other projects have you got in in the whole portfolio and uh, i mean when you're looking at trying to manage uh investors expectations but having all of that on your sort of project template how do you go about sort of well yeah defining what you want to prioritize and where you want to allocate your resources to look our focus is very much in the west belt bro okay because there's a lot of synergy between the projects you know where the and the metals as well and uh, it's a relatively easy place to work. It's easy to get to. There's good infrastructure, roads, airports, accommodation. Everything is there. And uh, in some ways, it's uh, as a mineral field, it's been a little bit overlooked or underrated. It sits right on the coast. And uh, a couple of hours plane flight from here, it's, it's pretty good. But we do have other other uh, secondary projects are well away and uh, at uh, Windermara and sort of east of Mount Magna and down in the Fraser Range as well. Okay. But these um, projects we don't give as much, they're, they're very much at the um, grassroots stage. Yeah. And uh, while we give them some attention, you know, to uh, test some ideas and so forth. Our main thrust is in the West Pilbara. Interesting, and it's a good point you mentioned about the infrastructure um, in the Pilbara because, yeah, there is already some, but it's only going to increase. And I think it's a it's a really good, uh, well, popular location to be in. But another point that I think is quite interesting is uh, again you've got a lot of indigenous groups um, to sort of work with and along a work alongside with and. One of the points now is, is we know they're so paramount to have on board. So with your, I guess if we swing back up to the Pilbara um, as the priority, I, I mean, what are the conversations like and what are some of the considerations that you guys are having to make when working with the traditional owners? Look, we find um, uh, there's one, uh, there's, there's more than one group up there mm. obviously, but 
the main one we're dealing with is the Nalama Regional Corporation, and they have their head office in Karatha. And they, their ground essentially covers everywhere where we're looking at, at the moment. Uh, we find that they're an exceptionally uh, easy group to work with, you know, in, in the sense that they're commercial, in a, you know. Um, there's never any, you know, we've never had any disputes or anything, we want to do that, yes you can, or subject to a survey or whatever, you know, it's, it's all straightforward. Hmm. Um, we'll be getting surveys done very shortly, you know, they do allow our drilling to go ahead, there's no problem you know, with that. Okay, okay. And uh, I mean, going forward, <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of a lot of things that you could expect. We're going towards the end of 2023 and it's almost a... Well, I can imagine a race to get some things underway because, well, a lot of Australians almost sort of hang the hat up and don't do anything over certain periods of time, which is <laughs> which is fine. But uh, I mean, from an investment point of view, what what can they really expect coming out from uh, GRE over the next coming period of time? And I mean, where do you really see it sort of evolving and and morphing into the future? Oh, look, there's on our lithium uh, project. I guess what will be coming out is drill results. Okay, like I said, we're, uh, we'll be updating the market very shortly as to when drilling will commence. <laughs> and um, those results hopefully will come, come out in the, in, the, in the coming sort of months, I suppose. Yeah, we've got to drill holes, yeah. get the results and so forth. Okay, but uh, some of our initial drilling will be core drilling, so we'll have visual results and etc so you know to look to um, and because these are such big targets you know our initial planning is uh, you know uh, quite simply put uh, where do you start yes yes and uh, so we're putting in some holes down we would plan to in terms to try and better understand what the pegmatites are doing before we follow up with a more detailed program so we'll kick off with that and roll into another secondary follow-up program because uh, we, we've got to know, you know, how thick they are at depth, or how steep they're dipping, and, you know, do they do what they're doing at the surface or do they change or flatten out and things like that. Mm. And, I mean, throughout your time, really, as a, as a geologist sort of starting, as you said, in, in diamonds, I mean, have you seen lots of, I guess, evolutions within the way that mining and exploration has evolved over the time? Or are we still, I guess, there's a lot of new technology that's helping it, but we still, or, or yourself, I, I'm trying to figure out, is it still very traditional in the way that the projects and exploration is sort of approached? Look, I, I think where it's has changed, of course, now there's a lot of technology that allows you to look for uh, blind uh, blind ore bodies um, at depth, so to speak, you know, using geophysics and so forth. Um, but I still think, and particularly with pegmatites, of course, because uh, they outcrop, you know, is the, uh, there is still a role for traditional geological work which involves boots on the ground and observation. And I think that's quite often the key. So it would be more the the, the prospecting aspects of exploration and uh, it, it, in some ways it's a perhaps a, a skill that's not as well developed as perhaps it was many many years ago you know and when the new you know now that the new technologies has come along and um, people become more reliant on those and often to the loss of prospecting abilities so terms of uh, picking up the odd looking rocks and stuff like that so and uh, I think you'll still find that a lot of discoveries are, while technology is important and a great uh, benefit usually you can uh, still benefit greatly by having observant geologists who see things when they're in the field yeah I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned that because I've heard that echo a fair bit just through conversations, the importance of being out on the ground uh, and walking it and, and yeah, noticing something, picking it up and, and having that, I guess, uh, you know, the background of knowing what you're looking at as opposed to looking at a, 
a Google map or using technology and not being out there and trying to predict it. But there's something to be said for, yeah, getting your hands in the ground and, and picking it up and feeling it and knowing it. And there's yeah, an almost an art loss in, in that regard that it's a good point, rely too much on technology to the point where you're not necessarily always out on the ground. And I mean, there might be some geologists that completely agree with that. And I was like, oh, technology is great. And I think it's a, a mix of both, but there's definitely been this, um, well, there's more of an emphasis now on exploration, which means that, yeah, you've got to use technology, but also get out in the field and, yeah, pick these things up with your, with your bare hands. Uh, th that's right. The, um, <clears throat> you know, and in, in even in our more recent experience in the last year or so, drilling, say, geophysical targets, you know, and we've drilled a couple that were sort of uh, very compelling targets and... Um, and uh, they've they were technical successes, <laughs> in a sense that they didn't have any nickel in them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, it's just always a, a, a sobering <laughs> result. Yeah. Uh, so I was saying, and, uh, and unfortunately, when you get those results, it doesn't leave you a lot of room to manoeuvre uh, if you've killed your geophysical target, you know, yeah. with a drill hole, and. Uh, <clears throat> So, and I guess things like that lead to the uh, saying, uh, don't drill your best target. <laughs> but, you know, so you, you need a range of information, really, that leads to you to drill targets and so forth. And, uh, and it does, and I think you've got to consciously be aware that there are other things, you know, geophysics is important, don't, you know, I'm not saying it's not, and, uh, and, and can, can help. And, uh, <clears throat> but there is a tendency to, uh, you know, generate a target and drill it. Yeah, we've got to, you know, drill, 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 you know. And mm. sometimes there's room for more thinking and less drilling. Interesting. Up, up to a point, you know. Yeah, no, of course. And I, and I think everyone wants to, yeah, the end goal is the drilling, but you've just got to take a step back well, and be like, there's a lot yeah. more to it than, than just th that. That's right, but... Uh, Nobody likes it when you drill, and what you said was there wasn't. <laughs> yes, yeah, the reality track, and yeah. yeah. So the uh, and and I think it's to uh, you know increase your odds of being successful is what you want. So you know you do everything in your in your power to before you run off and and drill things. You know what other supportive evidence is there, Eric? You know and. Um, Sometimes there isn't, you know, you yeah. target, you've got to drill it, you know, and um, and live with the uh, result. Mm. And, uh, but things, you know, in the small cap end of town these days, there's the accelerate, uh, exploration moves at a fairly fast pace. Um, you know, people don't like waiting for assay results and so forth. And these, over the last year, last year in particular, you know, the time frames for getting assay results back was quite extraordinary. Yeah, you know, it was a long period know, of time. Four months or five months or whatever, and which, if you're a small company, sort of you know, kills the news flow that people want. And, um, but I think the best thing with a lot of, you know, is to have methodical exploration and uh, try not to overpromise, but, the, uh, you know, to move forward. And so that you can ultimately be an overnight success, you know, yeah. based on... <laughs> Of thousands of results. Yeah, true. Yeah. And, you know, lots and lots of rock dip samples and so forth. You know, as the um, it can, you know, as long as you're moving in the right, you're methodically searching your ground and based on on mm. uh, good, you know, on on a theory, except concepts, and um, hmm. and and joining you alongside this journey. Uh, as you said, there's a lot of synergies with a lot of the other positions that, that you hold as well. But uh, there's a there's a few other people that are alongside of you that are driving <coughs> green tech medals and I guess pushing this and, and doing the best thing in the interest of, of shareholders and also elevating the, the project because, yeah, who knows what we could be out there. And I think everyone knows that we need lithium. So someone's going to be out there discovering it on top of nickel, copper and mm. a few of the other electrification sort of materials, but who else is alongside you in, in the team and um, what, what is their track record and, and what have they done in I guess, your relationship with them to begin with as well? Well, look, one of the uh, groups that we've uh, engaged with is the Obsidian Metals Group, okay, and that's uh, led by uh, Michael Fotis, 
who you know is is a uh, legend in the uh, lithium world. Uh, he came out of Galaxy, and uh, you know built that company mm-hmm. along with the, his uh, partner that was there. Uh, you know from uh, a low market cap, five or ten million, you know, up to half a billion or a billion dollars or, or more, and. Uh, and again, it was a, a story that was, uh, you know, took a long time in the making. And if you talk to him, you know, it had ups and downs and so forth. But, but he was managed to be involved in that project, you know, from the exploration right through to the building the plant and the marketing and all of that. So very well connected and well known in the, in the lithium sector. And at a very early stage, the, uh, we had been engaging with uh, Michael before we even found uh, Kobe uh, because we knew there was likely to be something up where we were looking and we were building up our uh, x and package. He said he'd like to be involved. And so we've engaged with him and he build, brings with him a wealth of uh, expira- uh, ex- ex- both exploration and corporate experience with, you know, strategies and things like that, and uh, to, uh, so, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel or make all, learn by all our mistakes. <coughs> Very helpful. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I mean, because it, 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 uh, it's so fast moving, uh, you want to keep on on the best path, path uh, possible, you know, and, um, and, I, and I guess that's, you know, he helps with our overarching strategies to uh, how do we manage this thing? You, you know, you spoke before. Well, who else have you spoken to and so forth? You know, well, we sort of manage that pace. We're keeping our powder dry. We talk to a lot of people. Uh, we've not engaged with other companies, uh, you know, commercially or whatever. So, uh, but sometimes you have no choice, you know, yeah. as some people find out. You know, you know, line down or whatever. Yes, yeah. Well, there's ho- there's hawks <laughs> in the in the air that exactly. are looking to so, yeah. uh, you know, we uh, sort of um, go about our business, put it that way, adding value, and uh, methodically, you know, we've mapped, we've rocket chip, we have our lithium pegmatites, we're going to drill them, and. Um, if we're, uh, like I say, we would think we'd have to be exceptionally unlucky uh, for us to, well, we're certainly going to find something, I can guarantee that. Mm. If they stick out of the ground, these things are usually can see them. <laughs> uh, so we must, uh, we'll get a drill hole through them and uh, let's see what's in them. And uh, and I think, you know, talking to the guys at Azura, even, even they were somewhat surprised by some of their results as well. That what you see at surface is, um, for whatever reason, uh, is not always an accurate reflection of what's underneath, and uh, so forth. Uh, you know, so we'll we'll just be patient, and uh, we don't have to wait very long. We'll have some drill holes down, and like Azua, you know, it's uh, interesting that it took them quite a while to get to their their best spot. And I can understand that these things, you know, there's a lot of pigmentites, they're quite long, and uh, you've got to work your way through through it all. And you know, what you see at surface not always a good reflection of what's underneath. Uh, these things can be zoned and things like that. And we don't pretend to know we under you know pretend to, that we understand all of that. You know that we can go and pick the right best spot first. So, but from our collective wisdom, you know, with Michael. And um, the rest of us will look at where Best we think options. we should drill. Yeah. And um, no doubt when we drill, we'll say, well, maybe we should move along a bit further. Well, yeah, you know, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. And uh, it'll, it's a process. It takes a little bit of time. And uh, then we'll see where that takes us. You know, it's, it's a bit like our copper deposit down at Wandu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a resource there. Okay. And the the more resources you get with these things, uh, you've got to decide, well, what do we do with it and how do you do it? And then when you talk to involved mining engineers, because we do have a mining engineer on the board, you know, they bring a different perspective, perspective to it. <clears throat> and um, they, they usually uh, 
uh, have a, a more sober look at things than exploration geologists. So, uh, mm. and uh, you know, we'll uh, think, you know, you know. So it, it's just a, pro- a straightforward process. And I think the thing is, it's methodical. You get build up the results, and uh, you uh, to build. If you get to the stage of building resources, which is where uh, a sewer at, you know, well, that's drilling, assaying, doing doing all the uh, studies and calculations and mm. working out what the resource is and and dealing with the um, <coughs> you know how uh, homogeneous the pegmatite is in terms of its mineralization you know that's one of the things you don't know until you drill yeah well and from the sounds of it there is a lot <laughs> happening and i always well what when you're talking there about the outcropping and not necessarily knowing underneath i think it goes that saying people always imagine uh, i imagine uh, uh, straight away you know the um the uh, ice cubes, not ice cubes. I've forgotten the bloody iceberg. Term. Iceberg. There we go. I took the word out of my mouth. Uh, and just that sort of symbolising of yeah, that you can see the top. You have no idea what's underneath, and that's at least the first thing that popped into my mind. I could see it. I just clearly couldn't say it. Um, but for those that are now uh, or interested in in green tech metals and and what's happening, and as you've said throughout it, there's going to be a fair bit of news that's going to be hitting the market and coming out. But for those that want to follow the company. Uh, and stay on top of the news flows and what's happening. I mean, where can they go and, and how can they access it? Oh, look, everything is uh, on our uh, website. Okay, we're just in fact having that those uh, updated now. So, and uh, they can get onto our obviously ASX releases and, and other avenues like podcasts that, that we have. So we. Uh, Spend a bit of time on, on the uh, promotion side, uh, and uh, to keep the market informed. Informed, yeah. yeah that's what we do, and uh, yeah, there's certainly all, all those avenues are available, and they're usually list- they are listed on our website. Good, yeah. Well, it sounds yeah, it sounds like there is a lot happening, um, yeah. and I'm sure there's also the social pages as well. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, but for those, uh, you can imagine there's going to be a few. There's always email addresses. I've seen them on the, the ASX announcements. People can email and reach out and, and ask questions. But, yeah, thank you so much, Tom, for taking the time to speak with me on the show. And, yeah, uh, given that you've got so many different projects, but definitely in the, the neurology play of where AZS and its success, its success uh, you know, I wish you all the best in what's going to unfold over the next, yeah, look, 24 months. Who knows what can oh, happen? Well, so. look, we're... Um pretty excited by it really and uh, you know because particularly now that we we can see the path to drilling and that'll be fairly soon and uh, you know can't wait to see what comes up so uh, you know we'll be doing a few core holes first up and uh, see see what it brings but uh, we've got a large area large pegmatites and good Lithium content. So yeah. That's, that's Let it roll. Deep. Exciting times. It is. It mm. is. And, uh, you know, we've got a very big land package there, you know, so now, you know, a couple hundred square k's. And, and mm. uh, you know, we work closely with uh, Artemis as well. They got their own ground, but we've got the joint ground there that we work with. Um, so, yeah, no, we're in a, a very good. Uh, good location. Yeah, location is everything. But, yeah, thank you so much for, mm. for talking on the show today. No worries, man. Happy to chat. Thanks for listening to the Market Bull Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow the Market Bull on our socials at Twitter and LinkedIn by searching The Market Bull. You can also subscribe to our newsletter on the website by visiting www.themarketbull.com.au.